The last step in mixing vocals is automation. Automation is where we're fine tuning. You can do anything in automation. You could automate EQs and compressors and all that stuff. But when it comes down to it, there's two main things that you should be focusing on with vocal automation. The first is vocal writing. This is where we're writing the volume fader to make sure it's exactly the right volume at every point and bringing out interest and character of the voice. And the second is effects to make sure the effects are interesting and all sitting at the right level for the vocals at every different point of the song. Now, if you haven't been following along, this is the last video in the Pro Vocal Mixing series where we're going through every step of mixing vocals inside Logic. Definitely go back and check out the other videos. And if you don't already have it, be sure to grab the Pro Vocal checklist that just goes through the six steps that we're doing throughout the series and how to do them inside Logic. So the next time you're mixing vocals, you can just quickly reference back to that. It's completely free, so be sure to pick it up. But let's go and jump into Logic. And let's start by listening to a before and after of the vocal up until this point. So the vocal without any processing, any of the stuff we've done throughout the series on it, sounds like this. Every time say that we both agree that we've got an understanding except that look when you leave. So for weeks we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding now we're breaking the I mean, pretty big improvement, right? And with automation, we're not gonna hear drastic difference. This is gonna be, again, really fine tuning it. So that's more or less the vocal sound, but now we're gonna get it to sit exactly right at every moment. And we're gonna do that through vocal writing and effect automation. Let's start with vocal writing. And with that, we're listening for cool character things we can bring out and making sure that no word or phrase is ever too quiet or too loud. Compression did the heavy lifting on that. It got it fairly controlled, but now we're gonna use automation just to really fine tune it, make sure that every word is heard clearly and not too loud. Let's go and listen through this first half here and decide if there's anything we need to turn up or down or if we just wanna bring out more character. Every time say that we both agree that we've got an understanding except that look when you leave. So that first line sounds great to me. There's nothing that gets lost. There's nothing that's too loud. It's a fairly sparse segment, so that makes sense. But I do want to bring out a little bit of character. There's some coolness in the way she comes into this first phrase, this first word here, and the way she leaves this word here. Let's listen to those. Every time say that we both agree. That gree is really airy and breathy. So I'm gonna hit A on the keyboard to bring up my automation here. And you could do this by changing from read over here to touch or latch. And then you could use this volume fader to write it in manually. Uh, but we're just going to draw it in just because I wanna be pretty precise on these points. Every time so what I wanna do is basically just have it catch a little bit extra as she's coming into that word to get kind of the coolness in her voice right there. Every time that breath going into it and then the way she's hitting that every. Every time Let's listen to the context of the mix. Every time say that we I think that's both cool. agree. And then the agree, I am basically just want to have it turning up as she's ending the word there. Both agree that we've got it's a little bit extreme, so we'll scale that back a little bit, but that's the idea. Both agree that we've it gives the listener the sense that they are right up next to the vocalist here, and every little whisper, every little cool thing coming out of the voice. I'm just going to slide that back a little bit so that it's not getting the start of the word quite as much. Listen to that one more time. Both agree that we've cool. got And then I want to bring up heat just a little bit in general and then also catch the character at the end of the word. So we'll just bring up the word in general a little bit and then I'm also just going to add an extra automation point here to bring up the tail of it just a little bit extra. Listen to that. Okay, so notice how as we get into the second half of that phrase right there, it's definitely a little bit too quiet. And I don't want to compress it anymore, I just want to bring it up a little bit extra in this final automation stage. So, it's really somewhere around here it starts to get a little quiet. So we're just going to automate up the rest of the phrase from here on. Add one more automation point at the start of this and then just pull this up. Let's listen to that. Down is a little bit loud, so what I'm going to do is just pull this down. 
And then I'm gonna pull this next section up a little bit more. A little bit more and I still think this middle part of this phrase is a little bit quiet. Add one more point there. I'm just gonna turn that up, listen to that. Okay, so that's vocal writing. I'm gonna stop there just because I think you get the point. I would continue on with this, make sure every word throughout the entire song is really sitting right and I'm bringing out character. I only do this on lead vocals. I might turn down backing vocals up and down here and there in sections, but it's not as minute detail oriented as it is in the lead vocal. And by the way, if you have something like the fader port or X touch or the UF control surfaces from SSL, any of those, you can write this in again by changing this from read to touch or latch. And then you can use those faders to write this in, which can be a big time saver. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over now and talk about effect automation. Now, the effects that we set up in the previous video, I think are great global effects, and they're actually the effects in the final released version of the song. I didn't have any other effects, but when I was setting up for this video, I was listening through, just thinking, is there any area where it would be cool to bring in more effects that I hadn't thought about? And I realized, yes, this section that we are in right here, as it moves into it, everything kind of drops way back and the vocal stays way up front. And I think it'd be really cool to try to tuck the vocal back more with some longer reverb and a time delay. So I went ahead and set up a bus eight and bus nine here. And bus eight is just a longer reverb. It's about a three second spring reverb. And then I just did a little bit of EQ after it to shape it a little bit more. And then I also set up this tape delay here and that's just a pretty cool sounding quarter note tape delay. EQ'd a little bit of it here, did a little bit of spread, and then did a phase tripper pedal on it just to add a little bit of phasing, which I think gives it a cool effect. And what I wanna do is as we go into this section, automate that up a little bit and then throughout it, maybe automate up a little bit at key points to really exaggerate the effect. So let's go and listen to this transition and see kind of what I'm talking about, how it needs to be pushed back just a little bit more. <laughs> Part I continue vocal writing. All those lies I told myself, or the eyes of someone else, no, they never really held. I just want to push that back a little bit. So we're going to bring up the automation for this bus here. Now, a cool trick is that if you go under your mix window to auto select automation parameter in read mode, then what this is going to do is any automation parameter that you click on, it will automatically change over to it. So if I click on this volume fader, it's going to pull up my volume fader. If I click on this knob here, it's going to change that. If I have this off, then when I click on this knob, it doesn't do anything. When I click on this volume, it doesn't do anything. This allows me to not have to go in and find that specific parameter to be able to automate it. I just click on it and now I'm now automating that parameter with this little line right here. So all I need to do now is just hold command on the keyboard to select my marquee tool that I've set in my second position here. And then I can select that area and just drag up. And I like to do this in the context of the mix. So listening to it, find where that vocal level sits right. So we're gonna do that while listening to the music here. So if we take that reverb back off, it sounds like this. All those lies I told myself, Add the reverb back on. Or the eyes of someone else. No, they never really held. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so it definitely helps tuck it back a little bit, but I wanna go a step further and exaggerate up at the end of the reverb so that it's sending more as she's ending these phrases so that we hear more of it in the little gaps. Now, we can do this by exaggerating it here and that'll be the first thing that we do, but I'm also going to pull up this reverb track and automate it up on that level as well. So if we find this reverb here, it's called verb long and hit create track here. It will now show up over here and I can automate this volume here to come up in the pockets when she finishes phrases. So All those lies I told myself, or the So I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit and then turn it up at this level here. Lies I told myself 
And then I just want that to end right before the next phrase. Turn it up a little bit quicker. So something like this. Whose lies I told myself or the eyes of someone else. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn up the send signal just a little bit. And then I'm also gonna turn up right after she finishes that phrase, right before the next phrase. We're just gonna turn this up a little bit right here. Listen to that. For the eyes of someone else. No, they never really helped. And then I'm actually not gonna do on that last part of the phrase. So that's something that might need a little bit more fine tuning to get to really sit just right, but you get the idea. You can fill in these pockets of space with effects in really cool ways. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do the last one, which is this tape delay here. So if I click on it, again, with this auto select automation parameter in read mode enabled, then it will pull up that automation lane right here. And I can just select this whole area and turn up the volume in the context of the mix until I like the level that I'm hearing at. No, they never really helped. Cool. Okay, I'm digging that. And I'm also going to find that track, create it. So long delay here. We'll hit create track. And on do this basically the same thing in those same pockets. Just try to bring up that delay in that space right there just a little bit extra. So I'm just going to select this gap, turn it up a little bit more. Myself or the eyes of someone else. So I just want to bring that someone else right there. And I'll leave that last one. Okay. So without these effects, it sounds like this. And then with those effects, it sounds like this. It might take a little longer to get that to sound exactly the way I want it to, but it's definitely moving in the right direction. And this is the cool thing about automation and using automation with our vocal effects is we can create different spaces, different environments for different points of the song. So it's very common for me to have really dry verses that don't have a lot of effects. And you open up in the chorus and it's a big lush chorus with lots of reverb and time delays and things like that. And then you go to the next verse and it shrinks back down again. And then you go to a bridge and it gets all weird and has really obvious delays and things that are totally inappropriate for other points of the song. Song, but because of automation, I can just bring them up at the key moments where it makes sense. So before you go, if you don't already have it, be sure to grab the Pro Vocal Checklist. It's totally free. It goes through the six steps that we did throughout the series. So next time you're mixing vocals, you can just quickly reference back to it. And I'd love to hear from you. Are there any other things that you typically automate on your vocals? One thing that's somewhat common for me is actually EQ, especially if there's one phrase or one section that's just a little bit muddy, but the rest of the song sounds great. I might just use an EQ that will automate down a little bit more, a little larger of a cut for one section and then go back up to where it should be for the rest of the song. That kind of stuff can make a big difference in terms of the overall song feeling exactly right at every point throughout the song. But again, just volume writing and a little bit of effect automation are my go-tos. And if you're not already doing it, definitely try them out. If this video was helpful. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time.